Hey, day camp, it's time to get together again. So here is a voice out of nowhere. I think you recognize my voice. But sometimes when we're talking to God, we cannot see God. Now I am not God and nobody would even think that I am, but sometimes God's voice kind of comes disconnected from anything we see. And that is the story of Saul's conversion. Remember, Jesus met him on the road, and Saul was blinded by the big light. He could not see who Jesus was. He could hear Jesus say, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And then Saul got up from the road to Damascus and carried on to Damascus with his friends. And do you remember whose house he went to? Right. He went to the house where Ananias was. Now, Ananias had been praying at home, and God said, Ananias, I need you to do something for me, Lord. And Ananias said, Lord, anything you ask, I will do it. And God said, Ananias, I need you to go to that house, and I need you to be prepared to meet the man from Tarsus named Saul. And remember how Ananias kind of struggled with, A, how was he supposed to meet a terrorist? B, did God really know what God was doing? Oh my goodness, all through history, people ask that same question. I wonder what God thinks God is doing. God knows what God is doing. So at the end of that story that we heard yesterday, Saul was baptized. So I thought today we should look at what a baptism can look like. So if Saul is baptized, it means he heard from Ananias and maybe some other disciples about the love of God. And Saul said, this is so brand new. I want to be a part of a God who would come and be the one to share God's love with sheep, with people, with women, with children, all equally around the whole area of Jerusalem. Now, Jesus, he went outside the boundaries, that place where nobody ever went. Jesus was the first one to go there and to draw his disciples with him. And Saul said, I'm in it, hook, line, and sinker. I want to be a part of this. So Ananias and company said, then Saul, you're going to need to be baptized. And Saul said, what's that? So they explained that baptism happens in water. Now, what do we know about water? Water cleanses, makes us clean. Where we were dirty playing in the garden or playing in the mud pit or going through the forest chasing after a deer, we get kind of dirty and that dirt can hurt us. So we wash to get clean. Now in baptism, our cleansing is from our sins. In the name of Jesus, we are cleansed because the Holy Spirit blesses this water. Second, what else do we do with water? What do you do when you're thirsty after a two mile run? Do you say, oh, I think I'll just go home and eat some cookies and sit and watch television? No. You're thirsty. You want to guzzle this whole pitcher of water on a hot day. Water helps hydrate us, quenches our thirst, and we cannot live very long without water. We, it's absolutely essential. It is, as the kids were saying in Sunday school on Sunday, it makes up, what, 90% of our body? It's how we live, and we can last three days without water. It is essential to our being. You can go a long time without eating, but you must have water. So water is essential for cleaning, to get germs off, to make ugly things go away, especially now during COVID-19. You wash your hands a lot. Why? To wash that virus away. Because water and soap kills the virus. And that's what we need, water. Water helps quench our thirst and gives us strength to carry on and meet a new day. In fact, if you don't have enough water, sometimes your brain goes a little tiny bit loopy because you're too thirsty to process brand new information. You need water. Third, in the Bible, there are so many lessons with water where God 
takes the people of God, like Moses and the Hebrews, or like Joshua and the Hebrews 80, 80 years later, to the edge of the Jordan. And both at the Reed Sea and the edge of the Jordan, God said, now, say the word to Moses, put out your staff, to Joshua, say the word, and the waters parted so that the people of God could get through from one side to the other side. And the waters were not just parted side to side. They were parted so much that the miracle of God dried the land underneath. So our baptismal waters remind us that God gets us through things. It seems impossible. Those waters we certainly can't get through. Our job is finished here. And God says, no, it's not. Watch. And God gets us through the problem. So here's Saul coming to be baptized. He knows these stories from Scripture. He knows about Moses. He knows about Joshua. He knows that God is a God who gets us through. And Saul says, you know, I don't understand everything that's going on here, but I understand that Jesus Christ is God risen from the dead. Come to save me, and I want it all. Baptize me. Now, we're in a church. I don't think Saul went to a church because by the time Saul met Jesus, churches didn't exist yet. People were still meeting in homes. People were kind of trying to stay off the beaten track because of people like Saul. So I don't think they had a baptismal font like this one or a bowl like this one. They probably went to a river, the river in Damascus, just like Jesus went to a river. And Saul, I don't know who it was, I don't think it was Ananias, but somebody took Saul, walked him down into the river and said, Saul, you're going down as a person who wants to see Jesus and you're coming up clean, dude. And down he goes into the water and up he comes and the Holy Spirit is there. Everybody that gets baptized gets touched by the Holy Spirit. It's a beautiful thing. And from that moment, Saul begins learning brand new lessons about God. He went back with Ananias and all of the disciples that were in Damascus, and maybe even some people came because it was a miracle that Saul, the terrorizer, became Saul, the disciple of Jesus. And they wanted to be part of watching that miracle happen. But what they did in a whole community, in a safe place, they talked about God. They opened up the scriptures and said, here is where God did this and this and this. And Saul said, yes, I know these stories, but now look at what Jesus did. Can't you see that Jesus was in it all along? And Saul did. And he, with the whole community, began praising God. Saul was baptized. Saul learned who his new friends were. Saul was like a sponge, soaking up that water and letting it get inside of him. And then he'd learn more. I want that too. And then he learned more. And I want that. He never stopped learning. Saul, first the terrorist, then the blind man who went to see Ananias. Then the scales fell from his eyes. Then the disciple, washed clean and made new by the Holy Spirit, who loved Jesus and was a sponge for knowledge. So, is that the end of the story? Holy Toledo, Ohio, we have hardly even gotten to the beginning of the story. See you tomorrow, but let's pray first. Ready? Reach up, grab Jesus, hold on to him. Let's pray. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Thank you for inquiring minds who want to learn more about you. Like Saul of all people and like all of us in camp. Thank you, Jesus. We look forward to learning more about Saul and more about you. We pray in your precious name. And all of God's kids said, Amen. See you tomorrow.